Ever wondered what really happens inside your body after drinking Coke for a long time? Well, this isn't just a theory. We're talking about real changes, like what doctors have seen in actual organs. So is drinking Coke basically slow motion suicide? And what about sugar-free Coke? Does that actually make it any better? Let's break it down. So first, the moment you take a sip of Coke, the sugar hits your tongue and lights up your brain. Your brain releases a ton of dopamine, the same feel-good chemical that makes you excited and happy. And yeah, that's a big reason why Coke can be addictive. You start craving it daily, and if you skip a day, you just don't feel right. Just two and a half minutes in, the acids in Coke, like citric acid and phosphoric acid, start attacking your teeth. These acids wear down your enamel, the hardest part of your teeth. Once it's softened, even chewing food can damage it. And here's the kicker, enamel doesn't grow back easily. Over time, tiny holes form and boom, cavities and other painful problems show up. Now, fast forward 15 minutes. The sugar from the Coke is absorbed into your stomach and sent into your bloodstream. That's when your blood sugar spikes fast. Your body reacts by releasing insulin to handle the sugar overload, turning some into energy and storing the rest in your liver or muscles as glycogen. But what if there's just too much sugar? Your body turns it into fat. Surprise. A single 330 milliliter can of Coke has about 27 grams of sugar. That's like eating 10 sugar cubes at once. And that's around 138 calories in just one can. If you drink two cans a day for two months straight, you could gain up to two pounds. And yes, being overweight increases your risk for heart disease, which is still the world's number one killer. So what if you switch to sugar-free Coke? Is that safer? Not exactly. Sugar-free Coke uses artificial sweeteners to taste sweet. Some of them, like aspartame, have been flagged by health organizations as possibly cancer-causing if consumed too often. They may not raise your blood sugar like regular Coke, but they come with risks too. 30 minutes later, the caffeine kicks in. It makes your brain more alert, gives you a quick energy boost, and releases even more dopamine. That sounds great, until your heart starts racing and working overtime. And once the caffeine wears off, crash. You'll feel tired and hungry. About an hour later, your blood sugar drops and the fatigue sets in. Plus, caffeine makes you pee more, so there's that too. So next time you reach for a Coke, maybe pause for a second. Is it really worth it? Did you know how terrifying the Ebola virus really is? We're talking about internal organs dissolving, bleeding out from seven different places in your body. Back in 1976, during its first known outbreak, Ebola had a death rate of up to 91%. It showed up like a grim reaper in the Ebola River Valley, wiping out 55 villages one by one. Thousands of people gone. The river wasn't just red from blood, it was soaked in pure human fear. That's how deadly this thing was. And that's exactly why the virus was named after the Ebola River. So, what actually happens to you when you get infected? Ebola is like a snake-shaped biological weapon. It enters the body through contact with blood, fluids, even the air in some cases. Once inside, it charges straight at your immune system like a mad beast. At first, you get a super high fever and a splitting headache. Then comes the vomiting and the unstoppable diarrhea. But that's just the beginning. In the final stage, your internal organs literally start breaking down, melting, rotting, you bleed from your nose, mouth, eyes, even inside your organs. It's called systemic hemorrhage, and it's pain no human should ever experience. The horror is unimaginable. Ebola is so deadly, the World Health Organization classifies it as a level four virus, the highest danger category. Its fatality rate ranges between 50% to 90%. That's even deadlier than SARS. So why hasn't it become a global pandemic like COVID? One reason, it's short incubation period. Ebola usually shows symptoms in just two to 21 days, and people get seriously sick fast. Ironically, this limits how far it can spread because people often become too ill to travel. But in today's globalized world, with planes flying across the planet every minute, the next outbreak might be just one flight away. Hey there, I'm your little immune guardian, hiding quietly at the back of your throat. Don't underestimate me just because I look like two tiny soft strawberries tucked away in your tonsils. 
I'm working overtime to protect you. You see, I'm your tonsil. I may seem small and harmless, but I've got some serious secret powers. I live right where your mouth and throat meet, like a checkpoint. Whenever bacteria or viruses try to sneak in through your mouth or nose, I'm the first to stand up and fight. I'm like a border patrol guard for your immune system. My surface? It's bumpy and full of tiny pockets called crypts. Think of them as mini traps, catching invaders from the air, dust, or food, and then signaling your body to send antibodies and immune soldiers to attack. And when you get a sore throat or fever and feel that swelling and pain? That's me, fighting hard in the background. I'm analyzing the enemy, recording their features, and teaching your immune system how to hit back even harder next time. I also make mucus and immunoglobulin to coat your throat and soothe and shield it, like wrapping it in a soft blanket. But here's the thing. Every time you eat super spicy food, stay up all night, or breathe dirty air with your mouth open, you overload me. And when I get too tired, I swell up, I hurt, and I send out signals, basically screaming, help me out. So next time you're sick, don't rush to cut me out. I'm not the bad guy, I'm your childhood immune hero, quietly battling countless infections you never even knew you had. Hi there, my dear human. You might not know me, but I'm sure you've heard my story. I'm your lungs, the two big soft movers inside your chest, rising and falling with every breath you take. Even though I look big, I'm surprisingly light, light enough to float on water. But you often forget me, you don't really care for me, and bit by bit you're treating me like a silent sacrifice. I'm the only organ in your body that doesn't need energy to work. With the help of your diaphragm and chest muscles, I breathe in and out, filling your blood with oxygen and sending it back to Big Bro, your heart, to deliver it all over your body. But every breath you take brings in more than just air. That same blood also brings back deadly carbon dioxide and I tirelessly filter it through my 300 million tiny balloons, your alveoli. I'm exhausted already, but then you smoke. One puff and 200 poisons rush in like a flood. Invisible dust, heavy metals, pollution. They creep in silently and start to blacken and harden my once pink, bouncy tissue. I begin to lose my elasticity and suddenly, you start feeling tightness in your chest. I see you struggle to breathe. It hurts me too. So I send in my tiny warriors, a million cilia like waves of wheat, to clean up, building walls with mucus to protect you. But nicotine burns them, turning my soldiers into statues. And the poison? It eats me alive. This is how pulmonary fibrosis begins. Breathing will one day feel like torture. You know that deep, painful cough you have every morning? That's not a cold, that's me, screaming for help as I squeeze every last bit of strength to keep you alive.